on this video, let's give you an update on how are the dividend stocks for 2020. As you all know, I've been giving you updates on how high the dividend yield is. I made one at the start of the year. I made one in the large drop in March 2020. How are dividend stocks playing out almost one quarter after? So if you want to know more about dividend stocks, so check this video out. Hi guys, so we are almost a quarter from the time the market dropped massively last March 2020. And it's been almost a quarter already since the lockdown happened. And this video will be primarily for dividend investors. This video isn't for people who want capital appreciation. This video isn't also for people who value uh, trading but this will be for long-term investors that what's very very important for you is to get yield of the dividends of the purchases of the stocks that you went into if you want to know more about dividend yields or stocks that give you dividends I have several videos I'll put it in the description or there's several videos popping up here that you can go to after this to give you a quick knowledge on what it is and how you can make money off dividends but one thing that I'll say is if you buy stocks that have dividends, that's your way, that's your ticket to passive income for life because it will still give you cash flow. And what has been so interesting, amidst the fear last March, amidst the large drop that we have been seeing uh, in the stock market, what gave me a sense that I know that I would have cash flow were the stocks that gave me dividends, just the preferred shares that I got, and the stocks that... Hmm, since I know that they're still gonna earn, their dividends won't be slashed and it might do even better. So if you want predictability of income, I highly suggest you study dividends more and more and more. So if you guys have also questions from this, put them in the comment section below anything about dividends and I'll try to make videos on top of that. By the way, my name is Marvin Gerbo. I'm a stock market trader and investor. And if you're new to this channel, appreciate it if you could subscribe and smash the bell so you get updated every time I come up with new content about investing and about the stock market. And if this adds value to you, press like, press a thumbs up so the YouTube algorithm shows this to more and more stock investors. Anyways, in the middle of March, when we started to see everything start to drop, I want to show you that since we have gone up from a stock price perspective, dividend yield is predicated also on how cheap you buy the stock. Since it has gone up already, please do note that the yields today are not as high as the yields that if you bought it a quarter ago, if you bought it last March, if you bought it when we saw the market uh, started to drop. That's one. Number two that I'd like to mention is basically this. I'm placing two assumptions. Number one is if you're again you're buying today and you're we're looking at what it could be uh, for 2021 already because some of the companies have already gave their dividends. Now that being said, I want you guys to at least you know, have a semblance of how your yields will be for 2021 because one of the reasons why I'm saying that you have a semblance because as you all know yields won't be the same. This, this doesn't mean that I show it here. It will be the yield that you will get from 2021. Next assumption that I'm putting in is this. The basis still of the dividend yield computation is the dividend on 2019. It's the price for June 13, 2020. I'll also make an assumption that what if their dividend for 2021 gets slashed by half. So there's a big chance no, that the dividends for 2021 or even at some point this year might not be as good as what it gave you in the previous years because as you all know some companies are trying to shore up their cash, trying to protect whatever cash they have so that they will be okay later on or really their income would be hit this year that next year would, wouldn't be as good. What if the dividends get slashed by half? Would it still be something that's attractive to all of you? As you can see, Cebu Pacific, 49 pesos stock price will give you a dividend yield of 14.29. So currently, it's the highest, no? But I just want to give you a quick warning that since the airlines are the most affected in all of this, there's a big chance that the dividends that Cebu Pacific will give you next year won't be this big. I repeat, there's a big chance that because Cebu Pacific and all of the airline companies are one of the most affected in all of this, 
there's a big chance that this 7 peso dividend, this 14.29 dividend yield might not be there next year. SPC has long been a large a company that's been giving out large dividends. A uh, problem lang with it is the liquidity. It's hard to accumulate a lot of stocks. So SPC 13.58%. DMC, as you all know, they've been battered because of uh, the issues with Manila Water, which now it, it's starting to recover. No? It will give you a dividend yield of 10.84. Semerara, 13.52 uh, will give you a dividend yield of 9.25. GMA7, 5.05 will give you a dividend yield of 8.91. Manila Water, 12.4 will give you a dividend yield of 7.34. Vistalad, 4.1 will give you a dividend yield of 6.45. Shangri-La, at 2.75 pesos per share will give you a dividend yield of 6. Shangri-La, as you all know, hotels. I've been mentioning this in a lot of videos that I've been making. One of the most affected in all of this are tourism related businesses, mass gathering related businesses, uh, and as you all know, Shangri-La has a resort in Boracay, which is hit. And if there's not a lot of foreigners traveling because of the travel restrictions, all of the Shangri-Las in Makati, Bonifacio Global City, and in Cebu also, which is also a resort, then in uh, Ortigas might not be earning as much. So it might not be this much. They might not be able to give this much for next year. But just so you know, STI 6.35, FLI at 1 peso uh, will give you a dividend yield at 6%. Again, uh, property development companies will be most likely hit also from a revenue standpoint because there may not be a lot of people buying properties this year as compared to last year. And this one, this is something that I really like. I've been a big fan of telcos, spe uh, especially when the lockdown got pushed further. A lot of people were forced to go digital. PLDT at 1,249, assuming that they give 72 pesos again next year, still at 5.76%. So this is something that's Remarkable. Uh, then you have Meralco, 292 pesos per share, will give you also a dividend yield of 5.5%. So if you notice it, even at when it was 200, a couple of months ago, the yield would have been higher. Same thing with uh, PLDT at 900, the yield would have been higher. Rockwell, 5.43, the Philippine Stock Exchange, 5.18, BNL, 5.13, Aboitis Power, defensive stock, energy related stock it's something that i believe is better off compared to the other tourism related stocks compared to the airline stocks call financial 4.97 ict 4.85 globe another telco company one of the reasons why globe though uh, has a very very low dividend yield already it's it's still high at four percent it's still better than the others but please remember it has gone up already quite significantly since the drop of march so 4%, BPI 3.67, Nickel Asia 3.59. And I want to submit this to you. At 3.67 for BPI, even though it goes down, let me give an example. If it goes down to 1%, it's still massively, massively, massively better than putting your money in time deposits. Union Bank 3.44, FPH 3.33, LPG 3.29. MPI 3.13, CEU 3.09, AEB 2.64, FGEN 2.58, RLC 2.55. So now it starts to get lower now. It's not as attractive. But again, this one at 2.55 still gives you the ability of capital appreciation and you will beat time deposits. So if your goal lang is beating time deposits and you have 100 million pesos, getting 2.5 million a year extra is something really, really good still. So 2.55%, uh, then you have a bonus of capital appreciation. Might not be as bad. MBT 2.5, uh, Pure Foods 2.29, URC 2.2, Mega World 2.06, Bloom 1.94, IMI 1.87, FEU 1.81, Jollibee 1.78, Pure Gold 46.4, Mega Wide 1.58, SDR 1.46, Security Bank 103.5. Phoenix 1.34, SMC 1.34, BDO 1.14, SM Prime Holdings 1.05, Ayala Corp 1.05, RRHI 1.03, SM 0.96, SM historically naman talaga hasn't been so popular in giving out large dividends. GD Cap at 0.61 and JG Summit 0.57. Now I'm gonna show you uh, stocks ranking 50 all the way to the top one. What if they slash the dividends by half. Uh, JGS 
is 0.28, GT Capital is 0.31%, SM is 0.48%, Robinsons Retail Holdings uh, 0.51. Now it's not as attractive anymore. No? Uh, Ayala Corp 0.53, SM Prime 0.53, BDO 0.57, SMC 0.67, Phoenix 0.67, Security Bank. 0.72 STR 0.73 Megawide 0.79 Pure Gold 0.86 Jollibee 0.89 FEU 0.9 IMI 0.94 Bloom 0.97 We are now number 34 no? and they still have not uh, gone above 1% yield uh, Megs 1.03 Mega World is the first one that reached it URC 1.1 FB 1.14 Metro Bank 1.25 RLC 1.28 FGen, 1.29 AEV, 1.32 CEU, 1.54 MPI, 1.57 LTG, 1.64 F FPH, 1.67 UBP, 1.72 Nickel Asia, 1.79 BPI, 1.84 Globe, 2.05. Here's the thing, though, for Globe, I don't think they're gonna slash it. Just a just a note, no, I don't think Globe will slash it because Globe is one of the companies that I believe will earn more. From this, so two things: Globe's dividends may stay the same. If not the same, it might be even better. So just a heads up, just so you know. ICT 2.42, Call 2.49, AP 2.54, DNL 2.56, PSE 2.59, ROC 2, ROCK 2.72, Meralco 2.75. So Meralco is still respectable also. So I don't also know if Meralco will slash because they're a very, very defensive company that their earnings will still be pretty much there. Same thing with PLDT. I believe similar to Globe. PLDT will do well based on this new normal that we are in. So last year, if the current price is at 5.56%, it might be even better. And again, uh, the trick here, when you are talk, when we're talking about dividends, it's all about what price you buy it. For this to be so attractive to you, for this to be so amazing, it has to be at a price that will do very, very well. It has to be a, at a price that you also want. Because if, if you're not getting the price that you want, then sayang, you might, it might not be as good as what you want it to be. FLI 3%, STI 3.17, Shangri 3.19, same caveat as Kanina, Vistalad 3.23, Manila Water 3.67, GMA 7, 4.46, Semerara 4.62, DMC 5.42, SPC 6.79, and Cebu Pacific 7%. But again, for Cebu Pacific, same caveat, uh, most likely they might not really give dividends, especially if they're losing money. Majority of the airlines around the world are losing money. Imagine no one's traveling, so how can they give dividends if they're not really earning? I hope that this gives you, uh, especially if you're a long-term investor, especially if you're an investor that ha relies heavily on dividends, especially if you're an investor that if the dividends are threatened, you don't want it anymore, then this could be a shot for you to either rebalance your portfolio, sell some of the dividend companies that are not doing so well, sell some of the companies that you can pre-position, sell the ones that have sucky dividends, transfer it to the ones that have really good dividends, or if you have cash, at least this gives you an inclination on which are the ones that have a shot to do very, very well. At, at, at the end of the day, please do your own computation still. This is just a reference for you to be able to do it. Because again, I'll, I'll never stop giving you data like this because I want you guys to think properly that you don't invest just purely on emotions, that you don't invest just for the sake of investing, that you invest because you know what it is. And you know that you're buying this because your goal, your narrative, is you just want to buy stocks that will give you passive returns, that will give you dividends, that while you're holding on to it, that if you can get passive income, you can get cash flow for life. And for me, that's the name of the game. Eh? You use capital appreciation to let you grow wealth, but you use dividends to give you cash flow that you can get as long as the company is doing well for the rest of your life. So that's it for now. If you guys have any questions, put them in the comment section below. If you guys want to learn more uh, or want me to analyze other things, uh, put them down as well. I appreciate it if you can like, subscribe, and share this video so that more and more Filipinos will be financially educated. And I just hope that as you're watching this, it pushes you know that, hey, I really need to take a look about investing. I really need to take a second look about my financial future, that I need to build this skill, this learning, to be able to be financially free and that's all I want for you guys I want you guys to be financially free I want you guys to get as much as you can to learn as much as you can I'm devoting the finest hours months days years of my life also to share what I know to all of you because I want you guys to win it's time for Filipinos to win it's time for Filipinos to be financially free it's time for Filipinos to get out of their rut 
and just focus on pursuing their dreams, pursuing that it can be done, eh, that you can be financially free, that it's not as hard as what most people think it is, but it's something that you pursue. It's something that will cost you something also. Don't just focus on the benefit. Focus on the cost, on how you can get that benefit. Everyone wants to get rich, but not everyone wants to go through the due process on how you can get rich. So that's it for now. Marvin Germo, I hope this video helps you trade well, trade strong, trade smart. See you all again soon, guys, and God bless you all.